Hi, in this tutorial I'll give you a quick overview of some of the things in Magic Music Maker to help you get started and also where to find help. There's a lot more to it than I can show you in this, so you're going to have to do an awful lot of reading on your own. Let's get started. When you open Music Maker, this is the screen that you see. Click on Download Add-ons and another screen will come up with all of the add-ons that you should download. Click on everything and download them all. This is for the premium version. You might not have all this if you get basic. It takes a couple of hours probably to install this. I'll create a new project and this is the screen that comes up. Click on File, Settings, go to Program Settings. And we want to make sure that we have everything set up for the sound. Click on Audio MIDI. You can see that I've got an ASIO for all driver set up. I've got some other ones as well. There's also the wave driver. Click on the advanced and you might see this if you're having trouble getting the sound. You may have to play with one of these here to get your, your sound working properly on your earphones or on your speakers. There's an output device indicated and the input device. I'll select the Casio. I already have my keyboard turned on. You have to turn the keyboard on before you start the program. At the bottom of the screen, if you click on instruments, you'll see all of the instruments that have been installed. If you need some help, click on help. There's also update programs, update functions. And the bottom one says download free synthesizer and sound packages. Underneath help, we have documentation, table of contents. This is the online help manual. This is a PDF manual, which is ident has identical content to the online manual. If you get the thousand sounds, this will give you installation guidelines and tell you how to do it. And you have more tutorials online down here. Let's take a look at the help screen. This shows the table of contents of the help manual. You should start off by reading the introduction, then take a look at the features, and definitely go through the quick start part. This will really save you a lot of time. You can search for a word or a phrase by clicking on search and typing in a word like MIDI, and it will give you a listing of everywhere in the manual where MIDI is used. And then go and take a look at the various subjects Another way to get some help is to go into the Magic's multimedia community. This is the forum. And you can post a question on the forum. This is the question and answers part of the multimedia community. And there is also a tab for tutorials. And you can filter the tutorials by category. So if you want just music, pick on that one. You can also go and look in the forum and check under All About Magic's programs and you'll see that one of these down here is Music Maker. Now, if you want to ask a question on the forum, click on the button Pose a Question. This gives you the input screen to post your question. The subject goes in under Your Question and the detail goes under Detail Text. Take a close look at the bottom information. Please consider the following points in your question. What is the problem? Please explain your problem in detail. We can't see your screen. We don't know what you did. Whatever you do, put in here which program you're working with. Magic's Music Maker, which year and which version. It's very important because there are many differences between the various years and the various versions. Attach screenshots to further illustrate your problem. There's a box on the startup screen to load the demo songs. And you can see that underneath that I have a lot of demo songs. I've kept some of these from previous versions of Music Maker. Select one to load it. And you can see that it has a lot of instruments. By inspecting this, you can use it as a learning tool to see how they put these things together. You can stretch the screen out and zoom in and also increase the size of the various tracks. So this will help you really get a close-up view as to how they put things together. To use one of the instruments for MIDI recording, click on the plus sign at the left-hand side and select an instrument. 
the instrument will load. I'll move it over. And playing on screen, you can hear what it does. Now I'll play on my keyboard. And I'll move the screen over a little bit so I can see the record button. And I'll record something with my keyboard. Stop. And play it back. I'll close this one up and I'll go to the second track and get another instrument. So I picked the violin. This will open the screen. You note at the top of the Vita screen it says violin. You can change that. Now I'll record a second track, so this is how you lay down tracks. And I'll stop that, play it back, and the two will play together. Note the yellow bar at the top. You want it stretched out long enough to do this, or you want it short if you want to repeat the loops. And I've changed now to another instrument. Pressing on the play button plays a default loop with a selected instrument. In this case, it's a power guitar. I can change to another guitar by clicking on the pop down and selecting another instrument. That works. If you double click on one of the instruments at the bottom, it will open up the instrument, but it will also place the MIDI default file in the track, which is probably what you don't want. And you can just delete it. And now I can play it with the keyboard. I'll just turn on the keyboard at the bottom of the screen so you can see this and hit a few keys. You have to get in the right spot. There we go. And if I record something on there and I'm playing on the keyboard on the screen. So that's it. We have three tracks laid down now. You can get the instrument editor by right clicking on the object and selecting instrument editor. Double clicking on one of the MIDI objects opens the MIDI editor where you can modify all of the notes that you've created. You can add notes, change the velocity, volume, etc. Now that you've seen how to get going in Magic's Music Maker, I'll show you how to add in a voice track or an audio track. Open the program settings. Go to the audio MIDI screen and change the driver to something that works with your microphone. In my case, I'm using the M-Track audio driver because my microphone's connected to my M-Audio M-Track mixer. Note at the top that the audio playback automatically goes to my mixer because I'll be monitoring through my mixer. Here's a screenshot of my mixer. There are many similar mixers on the market. It has two channels, left and right, and these will both go to one audio track. It's connected to the computer by USB. I plug in my microphone to the XLR and a guitar or mic into the other channel. The gain or volume control is adjusted here on the mixer, not in the computer. I monitor using headphones connected to the mixer. Direct is the sound input into the mixer. USB is the sound that's coming back from the computer, so you can listen to any instruments that you might have on the audio track. I'll accept the parameters, and I'll click on the record button, and it says audio record. I'll open the parameter screen to make sure that I've got the parameter set up correctly. I've got my M track set at the top. Below it is the name of the file that it'll create, and the location of the recordings. If I use both channels of my mixer, I'll keep it a stereo, but I only have one microphone, so I want to check mono. That way the sound will come out of both the left and right speakers. It's a good idea to click on peak control and just check out the volume of your microphone or input to make sure that you don't have clipping. I'll accept those parameters and click on the red record button to start recording from my microphone. And you can see that it's recording onto track one. When you're finished, click on stop, and you can go back and listen to your recording. Now if I've already laid down some instrument tracks, I can just click on the audio record button and sing over top of them, and I can monitor the whole thing 
through my earphones. Don't forget to set the playback marker to the beginning. You'll notice I've moved the yellow bar to be just the width of the instrument so that they'll repeat. Open the mixer by pressing M. Here you can modify individually the volume settings of the tracks. You'll see track 3 is ARM for recording. If you didn't have automatic normalization set in the parameter screen, you can right click on the object, go to volume, normalize, and it will normalize your recording. Now let's take a look at sound pools and loops. When you first install Music Maker, you may not have any here, or after you've downloaded everything, there may be some that come in. You can click on the Add button here and navigate to the location where you keep your sound pools, and it will automatically fill in the table. By default, the sound pools are installed under Users, Public Documents, Magics, Common, Sound Pools as you can see on the screen right here. And you can see that this is where I keep all of mine. If I purchase any new ones, I add them in here. That way I can keep track of where everything is. And Magix can find them. Since I use other Magix programs like Movie Edit Pro, and I download from Katu site additional music and sounds, I install everything here. That way I can find it easily. Now let's take a look at how to use some of these sound pools. I can click on any one of these, like blues, and select an instrument, and then one of the loops underneath here, and then simply drag the loop that I want up onto the arranger, and then click on play to play it. I can select another instrument and drag the loop up onto another track, and you can see at the left-hand side, it shows the instrument that you're using for each track. Now if I select Brass, you'll notice that there is a key on the right-hand side. It says A minor. Each of these buttons has a different key. And these keys are pretty much the same throughout all of the sound pools. You build up your tracks and your song by adding in the sound pools or the loops. And you can also add in audio tracks and MIDI tracks. To finish off, I want to go back to that yellow bar that you see at the top of the screen. The yellow part shows the length of the playback area. To move the left end, click on that line where you want with the left mouse button. To set the right end, use the right mouse button. And of course you can drag either end to cover the area that you want. I'll insert a one bar loop and resize the yellow playback area to cover just that. Watch as I play this back. It's going to loop back to the beginning and just keep looping over that one bar area. Now if I record a second track, what I'll hear in the monitor is that one bar loop and it just keeps repeating, but my recording will just keep on going. Now I can drag the yellow bar out to cover my entire recording or double click in the top. You should also take a look at the online video tutorials that Magix has put on the Magix.com site for Music Maker. Go to the very bottom of one of the products and you'll find a link to the tutorials. Now you've had a pretty good introduction to getting going in Magix Music Maker. Don't forget to download and install the free add-ons, to read the manual, take a look at the online tutorials, and what I've shown you here is how to lay down some MIDI tracks, some audio tracks, and how to use some sound pools. So start making some nice music. Enjoy.